Today I'm going to continue talking about Angular Dart. If you missed the first screencast in this series, you can find it online on dartcasts.com. In this episode, I will talk about using the HTTP service, using scopes for message passing, and application configuration. And to illustrate all these things, I implemented the following feature. What I did is I added the online status to the user. Uh, to show this message when the user is offline and to show the call button when the user is online. That's how it works. Every time I open a call, the application makes a request to the server, then it parses the response and shows or hides the button. All right, let's take a closer look at the implementation, starting with the backend, which I faked since this screencast is about Angular and not about implementing web services in Dart. I did that by just having this JSON file here. So the server always returns the same list of users. Now, let's see how we can access this endpoint from our Angular application. As shown in the previous screencast, show call controller is the one that's responsible for getting all the data about a call. To implement the desired feature, I'm ejecting an instance of the user repository class that I can use to get all the users. After the future gets resolved, I'm checking if there is a user with a specified name and if that user is online. This information gets stored in the user is online field. Not surprisingly, this field is being used in the corresponding template. Now, after we saw how the repository gets used, let's see how it's implemented. As you can see, user repository depends on the HTTP service, which is provided by Angular. The HTTP service is robust and provides multiple configuration options. I am not using any of them here. I use it as follows. First, I am making a request to the server. Second, I am extracting data. And finally, I am building a list of users out of that data. That's really straightforward. The question you should ask yourself, though, is what happens if the request fails? Let me show you what application does right now, and then we will look into how it's implemented. In order to do that, I need to break the backend. The easiest way to do that is just by deleting the JSON file. Let's jump into the app to see what happens. We get a pop-up with a link. The error handling strategy that you just saw is implemented as a global HTTP interceptor. Such interceptors get applied to all HTTP requests. Let's jump into the app file to see how this interceptor is registered. First, I'd like to draw your attention to uh, the fact that NG Bootstrap returns an injector, which we can use to configure our application. And the way you do that is by getting injectables, in other words, services, and configuring those, which I'm doing right here. The way you add an interceptor in Angular is by configuring HTTP interceptors, not the HTTP service. That's what I'm doing right here. I'm getting an instance of HTTP interceptors and using it to register my global alert interceptor. This is the definition of my interceptor. Since I'm handling failed responses, I'm overriding only the response error handler. There are other handlers you can override. To show alerts, I'm using the messages service, which we're going to look into in just a second. One thing to note is that I have to return a future. Otherwise, the request will be considered successful. This behavior can be desirable in some situations, for instance, when I can fix a failed response by retrying, but not in my case. That's everything regarding registering global HTTP interceptors. 
This mechanism can be very useful when dealing with such concerns as security, retries, authentication, and global error handling. The last thing I will show you today is global alerts. You can see over here that I'm using the messages service to alert a message. Let's jump into it. It's very, very simple. The only thing I'm doing here is I'm getting the root scope and then using it to broadcast a message. Scopes, for those who aren't familiar with AngularJS, form a hierarchy similar to the DOM, with the root scope, not surprisingly, being the root of that hierarchy. They can be used for a couple of things, one of which is broadcasting messages. A broadcasted message can be received by any descendant of the scope. And since I'm using the root scope to broadcast alert messages, any component that's listening will get the messages. Like this component I added to the main HTML page. And that's how it's done. I'm registering an event listener that just updates the message property. I bind this property in the corresponding template, so the pop-up shows up when the message is present. Wrapping up. Today we've looked into a few things. First, we've learned how to use the HTTP service to talk to the server. Next, we saw how to configure an application using an injector. In our case, we added a global HTTP interceptor to handle unexpected errors. Finally, we looked into using scopes for broadcasting messages. If you found it interesting, check out the repo with the sample application shown in this screencast. Thanks for watching.